Hello, let's do a cold ice crystal battle, Thorn Explosion Critical Starter build that focuses on dodge plus armor. Barrier is a solid choice, but harder to do, as equipment requires better tier rolls on affixes in order to get enough barrier to survive. Another benefit of barrier build is overflowing energy link wound, which helps with survivability and adds substantial amount of damage. Frost Shock is not a bad choice as an alternative. But Thorn Explosion is more versatile, as it works with Source and Origin Awakenings, depending if you need more single target damage or map clearing. Plus, it enables to use Maximum and Projectile Damage Tag. Main stuff out of the way, let's go into the build. Skillbot should look something like this. Let's start with the Ice Crystal Arrow. It's additional call damage, confidence, quick attack, split projectile, sharpness. For Thorn Explosion, it's uh, Convert Call Damage, Additional Call Damage, Area Effect, Find Weakness and Acceleration. If you don't have Acceleration, you can use Winding Wind or Preserve Mana. For the trigger, it's Spell Activation on Attack Hit. For Movement Abilities, it's Trick Shot and Roll with Use Count and Disarm. For Attack Enhance, it's Marksman, but if you have, you can use Vital Strike, which is going to be better early into the game. With Enhance Effect, Increased Duration and Time Acceleration. Defense Enhance is Siphon Life with Time Acceleration and Increased Duration. Attack Toggle is Illusion Arrow, converted into Fire Damage with Extract Energy. For Defensive Toggle, you can use Counter Attack, it gives a little bit of dodge. For Attack Seal, it's Convinced Elements or Critical Chance, but which, whichever one you have. For Defensive Seal, it's a Seal of Dodge, but you can use uh, Physical Domain, Elemental Domain, Chaos or Elemental Resistances. And Shadow Provocation to remove the Craft Control, with Buff Activation upon Craft Control. Charms. So for the first Blessing, we want to focus on Castor, then pick up Mirosetti, Leo, and Alyssa. Alyssa is only gonna work on Thorn Explosion. For the Charms themselves, you always want to get Critical Rate and Critical Damage. After that, everything works. You can pick up some damage multipliers, chance to deal double maximized on hit, or some HPs or resistances. Relics. You can start with the Sebda, pick up Chaos Resistance or Hit Rate, whatever you need the most, and Mental Simulation for the active, with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. The second one, you want to go for Aquila for Cold Penetration. Third one you can go Spica, just for the chance to deal double maximize damage on hit. For the last one you can do Boreal for extra HP, as the last one is gonna only have 15 levels. So this is the best choice, Enhance HP. Zodiac, so the most important thing to note is that you always want to spend your points first onto the specializations. So the first pack opens up at 22 points. Second spec at 45 and first spec on to 70. Some of the zodiac no notes are gonna be optional. Whenever I say that, you want to keep those notes whenever you lack some points to open up your specializations or to pick up those later into the game. So let's start with the Afros, then into Wanderer, then into Gem, into Prela, into Petal. Then the first pick is Dawn. You can also use Brilliance, but Dawn is a little bit more balanced earlier into the game. So we want to pick up Uplift, Overpower, Strike Damage Amplification. And you're gonna get two extra points when you finish the quest in the Saluto. You can either pick up Area Effect if you are running Thorn Explosion Origin, or Convert Mana if you have mana issues. Then Flash, Rainbow, Namera, Float. Float is optional one, and you want to pick up every single elemental node in here. Hail is the second spec. You can go into Tempest, Sharpness, and Strike Damage Amplification. When you get two extra points from the Saluto quest, you can spec into Element Observer and remove Sharpness. Sand. Artem is optional one. If you choose Convert Mana early, and you don't have any way to solve your region, you can pick up HP on kill. It's gonna help you to sustain your HP when you're using Convert Mana. Deadly Poison. Maggot. 
Manglet is kind of optional. It's it, you're not gonna be able to do it early into the game as you need strength, intelligence, or dexterity 200 and more. But after you get those, these five points are gonna be the most damage you can pick up in the Zodiac Tree. Plague. You want to pick up critical rate in here and critical damage. Pharma is again optional if you need some HP. Hunter. Blacksmith. Asm atmospheric pressure. Metamization. And so on any critical build, we are always looking for our weapons that has the highest critical base possible. On the bow, that base is 11. So on the affixes, you always want to get gear critical rate. This is your main one. If you roll that, everything else you get that is offensive is going to be good. It's either critical damage, weapon damage multiplier, weapon damage flat, cold damage flat, or weapon speed. On the neck, you want to get a critical damage implicit neck. You want to roll some cold damage and a mental damage multipliers, and after that, it's up to you. You can get some defensive rolls, HPs, resistances, or a hit rate. On a ring, you want attack critical rate implicit ring. You want to get, again, attack critical rate, the most important one. Then critical damage, elemental damage, attack speed, and after that, you can get some HPs or stats, whatever you need the most. On the quiver, you want to get attack critical rate, critical damage, elemental damage multiplier, attack speed, HPs, or, or cold damage flat. On the items, you always want to focus on dodge rate multiplier. And dodge rate multiplier works better on a high tier items as the base of the gear is a little bit higher. After that you can get HPs or resistances on the suffixes. Or hit rate if you need more offensive roll. On the boots the main difference is going to be that you want to get movement speed increase. After that you can get some projectile damage, some dodge rate. Perfect dodge works too. Cold resistances, lightning resistances, and chaos resistances, or whatever you need more. You can also pick up some hit rate if you need more offensive roll. Skill board average should look something like this. Let's start with the thorn explosion because there are two ways to do it. You can awaken it into source for more single target damage and use concentrated area damage, or awaken it into origin, which changes the projectile number to 3. And you want to use area effect on that. And if you can stack your explosion range to 280, those th three projectiles are gonna start to overlap on my small targets. So you're gonna have more mapping and more single target potential. For the links you want to use, depending on your choice, either area effect or considered area damage, then strike and mana storm. For the ice crystal arrow, you want to pick up chain. And at some point, you will want to change your confidence and additional cold damage. You can change additional cold damage into elemental damage jump or another mana storm. For the confidence, you can change it into killing machine, but only when you are close to 5 attack speed without confidence. For the rapid seal, you can either use condensed elements or striking. I would say it's better to keep Seal of Striking as an attack seal, as it's gonna scale better into the late game, and you can awaken your condensed elements or critical chance into rapid seal. You can also use totem activation upon using an enhanced skill and link it to marksman and pick up weakened totem and awaken it to source for more elemental damage taken increase after the totem dies. The last thing to mention before leaving, switching out Illusion Arrow for Shamble Provocation and getting a little bit more base armor onto your build is going to help you a lot in the survivability. It's a good choice if you are playing hardcore mode. Otherwise, just keep Illusion Arrow with fire energies and it's going to add a decent amount of single target damage. So thanks for watching and if you have any questions, feel free to ask on YouTube or you can find me on Twitch. Have a nice day and have fun with the new build.